so if you understand the importance of animal rearing in the farmers economy right so animal rearing it holds a paramount importance in the economy of indian farmers uh, who often practice mixed farming combining crop cultivation with livestock management to uh, maximize resource efficiency good morning students welcome back to pluto says right so today we are going to study about the animal husbandry yesterday we have studied about agriculture in detail especially the challenges associated with the agriculture sector along with the importance and significance importance and significance of agriculture right similarly we have also seen the green revolution and also the land reforms so these are the important things when it comes to the agriculture sector so along with that in agriculture sector two other things that is animal husbandry or we can also call it as animal rearing husbandry and horticulture horticulture these two things also very very important their importance is uh, increasing day by day so in the in the next two classes we are going to study about these two things right today we will study about the animal husbandry or animal rearing tomorrow we will study about the horticulture sector right right so if we see a brief introduction about the horti uh, animal husbandry it holds a lot of significance as you all know it is part and parcel of the agriculture sector agriculture or farming in india especially in the rural india right so it is uh, holds significant importance in the indian agriculture sector it supports approximately 20 million farmers 20 million livelihoods it supports approximately right so two thirds of the rural communities in india rely on livestock for their livelihoods so all with, with the help of all this all these data we can say that it is an integral part integral part of uh, rural community and the farmers or farming and the rural communities right so this holds lot of significance so because of this reason also some experts opinion that uh, two important revolutions have been uh, two important uh, revolutions have happened in india one is green revolution second one is white revolution so they are significant significant developments when we see the agriculture so the criticism about green revolution is that it helped only the well off farmers well off farmers uh, however though there are lot of benefits we have benefited a lot from the green revolution there is a criticism that the green revolution helped only the rich farmers well off farmers those who have the land holdings large land holdings and it also confined to only specific states the states where the fertile land is available like states like punjab haryana western uttar pradesh when we come to south uh, the tamil nadu andhra pradesh especially the coastal andhra pradesh region only these a uh, few states have benefited from the green revolution however if we see the white revolution that is in the milk production so this white revolution in it benefited the poor community poorer communities though those who have dependent on the rearing of cattle or milch animals so they have benefited further the benefit has been even across the country so one advantageous thing is it was focused or it was benefiting the poorer section of the farmers or those who do not have the land holding at all so they were only just rearing the cattle they were selling the milk and they were earning their livelihood so this is the one benefit and the other thing is its spread is even across the country so these are the advantages of milk production so in this way some experts a section of the agricultural experts opine that so instead of focusing on the green revolution or only on the agriculture you try to focus also on the uh, animal rearing so because of uh, if we focus on that the poverty alleviation 
efforts for the alleviation of the poverty they will be more successful successful so in this way by bringing the grail revolution or focusing on the animal rearing sector we directly working on the poorest of the poor people right so this is uh, some information this is the ex- uh, opinion of the uh, experts so apart from that india boasts a diversity diverse array of cattle we uh, know very well there are diverse array of cattle including cows buffalo goats so yaks are there when we come to colder areas uh, hilly regions so many diverse uh, cattle are there in india so some of the examples are small ruminants those are goat and sheep fowl uh, fowl pig uh, equine species show causing rich heritage of uh, animal rearing in india all right so the incomes uh, derived from the livestock sector they constitute approximately about 16% of the earning of small uh, farm household so this is a very very good addition to the main source of income whatever the farmers or rural people are earning so 16% is a very good addition for the uh, people of rural india right so it is surpassing the average contribution of 14% for all rural households right so moreover approximately 8.8% of indian population is employed in this sector so this is a small sector however you can uh, know the importance of this sector with the data provided here right. so this sector contributes approximately 4.11% to the gdp total gdp and of india and a quarter 25% of to the total agricultural gdp of the country so whatever the gdp of agricultural gdp is there so one fourth of that is coming from the allied activities only right so this is the importance of cattle rearing or animal husbandry right if we understand the significance of animal husbandry right so because it is uh, the uh, one one thing is animal re- uh, rearing it is deeply connected with the natural environment and uh, less resilient or less dependent on the external inputs i mean very few external inputs are required because mostly the animal rearing most requirement is fodder right so this fodder uh, it is entirely coming from the farming only mostly in most of the times so the waste after the harvesting the residue or waste agricultural waste or organic uh, material that is coming from the farming that will be used as the fodder for the cattle so if we see rice so the rice straw after uh, left to the after the harvesting of the right uh, rice that is used as fodder for cattle if you see jowar or for that matter maize also so the <coughs> leftover uh, material after the uh, harvesting of the this particular crops so this will also used as the fodder for the cattle so in this way if the fodder for the cattle is coming from the farming only so in this way it is greatly intertwined with the environmental natural process and uh, it uh, rarely needs inputs from the outside like medicines only veterinary apart from the veterinary services and medicines rest of the things are coming from the agriculture sector or farming only right so even during the agricultural down downturns means during the droughts it contributes nearly 40% to the rural gdp nationwide so it is contributing approximately 40% to the rural gdp so whatever the rural gdp is there almost a half of it just less than 50% of it is coming from the animal rearing sector only right so if we take this arid and semi arid regions means dry areas agriculture where agriculture is limited to the monsoonal rains so after that uh, in such areas cattle rearing this provides a consistent 
income for those people who are residing the arid and semi arid regions so they are de- they have dependent on the monsoon for the rainy season so hardly one crop only one crop is possible in the year for the rest of the period the animal rearing animal rearing it is providing a constant income or consistent income uh, for the people who are residing there so in this way it is giving income security income security for the people right next is <coughs> right so the diversity of livestock breeds that are there in india they risk so they serves as a risk mitigation strategy as different breeds uh, bred to excel in various conditions and purposes so in this way so agriculture we have understood it is a it is a highly risky profession because the entire uh, i mean most of the majority of the agriculture in india it is dependent on the monsoons and the monsoons are known for their vagaries so one uh, in uh, one region in the same year one region we will be seeing the floods in the other region we will be see- seeing the droughts so in these conditions like drought conditions the animal husbandry animal husbandry it works as a stabilizing thing right so when the income is not coming from the agriculture sector or farming the 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 animal husbandry animal husbandry it works as an insurance right so uh, because of this reason it ha- holds lot of significance or importance right so india's livestock statistics uh, they speak volumes about the prominence of this sector globally so the, uh, these are uh here some statistics have been given about the livestock of india so through those numbers you can understand the importance of the livestock in india right so india it has the world's largest livestock population standing approximately 535 million numbers so it is highest in the world after that china has uh, after india china has the next highest livestock population right it leads the global buffalo population with 109 million numbers so in the buffalo population india is number 1 it ranks it, india ranks second in both goat population and the poultry market size right apart from that india is the second largest fish producer glo- globally and a prominent player in aqua culture right third uh, next thing is it holds third position in the, uh, sheep population fifth in ducks and uh, chicken population and the uh, 10th in came, camel population so these are the diverse uh, wild uh, sorry animals uh, we can say domestic animals that are present in india so these are these are the different livestock that are present in india so in this way it also adds one thing it is acting as an insurance during the drought time drought periods apart from that one more thing it is doing is it is providing uh, it is diversifying the food basket diversifying the food basket food basket especially of the people of rural india so in this way it is ensuring food security food security to the people of india especially the rural people so this is the significance of animal husbandry right so if you understand the importance of animal rearing in the farmers economy right so animal rearing it holds paramount importance in the economy of indian farmers uh, who often practice mixed farming combining crop cultivation with livestock management to Uh, maximize resource efficiency so mixed farming we have also understood when we were studying the geography topics it is farming combined with animal rearing animal rearing so these two have a symbiotic relationship so uh, the we can say residue or waste that is coming from one sector 
it is used utilized by the different sector for example the organ leftover organic material after the harvesting it will be served as a fodder for the cattle and the we can say animal dung or cattle dung so it works as a good manure good manure uh, for the fields so in this way when organic manure or uh, the organic organic weeds waste that is coming so when it is added to the agricultural fields the production will be high so apart from that the bullocks etc they will work as a draught animals for the agricultural purposes so in this way these two are very well intertwined and there is a symbiotic relationship between the two so in this way animal rearing holds a lot of significance when it comes to india especially rural india so because of this mixed farming is followed in india mixed farming we will see in india so if we see how livestock contributes to the farmer's livelihood in different ways first is food product food production right so livestock such as cows buffalo they and the poultry also they provide essential food items like milk eggs meat etc so so in this way it provide it is contributing for food production so you also know very well that india is ranks as the number 1 country in milk production milk production so in the third and uh, in the next positions countries like australia new zealand they are placed however there the dominant way of uh, milk production is cattle ranches will be there cattle ranches will be there so it is a commercial activity there in those countries countries like australia and new zealand so many hundreds of number of cattle will be uh, kept in the shed and uh, milk will be collected from those animals however when it comes to india there are many individual farmers many individual farmers are there so apart from their farm apart from apart from doing uh, farming they also keep one to two cows or we can say milch animal milch animal they will keep so this mill i mean the milk whatever that is uh, given by this milch animal it will add as a very good income for these farmers so in this way only india could become the first country in the uh, in the world in producing milk right so uh, you uh, you can understand that how well it is benefiting the farmers in the country right next is fiber and skins so the livestock also will yield wool hides and pelts so these are uh, apart from leather so these are very good products when it comes to i mean the all these have very good economic value so in this way the animal rearing sector, sector it is all, it is providing very good benefit to the farmers next is agricultural operations and transport so we have uh, study uh, we have known about the draught animals draught animals so the bullocks they remain the integral to the indian agriculture offering cost effective alternatives to various farming tasks reducing reliance on exp- expensive mechanical uh, powers like tractors etc so for plowing me uh, till now until now also the popular we can say method is using bullocks bullocks for uh, plowing right <clears throat> because we have understood the reasons it is very difficult as the size of the land holding is very small in india it is very hard to use the machine machines like tractors for plowing etc still the bullocks are used for plowing in the country apart from that the <coughs> uh, pack animals such as camels horses and mules they play crucial roles in transporting goods particularly in hilly terrains and the high altitude regions next another important aspect is animal waste utilization right so animal dung it serves as a valuable farmland manure so when this manure is applied we will get good production of the crop next is livestock as asset so in the for the rural community the livestock 
acts as a asset so so it serves as a movable asset providing safety net during emergencies and serving as collateral for accessing loans particularly for landless agricultural laborers laborers so sometimes when there is a uh, very high emergency like health problems they tend to sell this assets also so to meet the urgent requirements of money right so this is the reason i mean this is uh, for this reason the livestock also acts as a we can say uh, asset for the uh, rural landless poor next uh, another benefit is weed control so uh, cat cattle contribute to weed control also by way of grazing so in this way they reduce the proliferation of unwanted vegetation and uh, maintains well maintains the agricultural land so whatever the weed that is removed from the uh, agricultural fields also it will be fed to the cattle so in this way uh, they also help in weed control next is socio cultural significance so the livestock rearing it is deeply integrated into the socio cultural fabric of indian pastoral communities fostering is a wealth of traditional knowledge and practices while safeguarding genetic diversity in domestic animal populations so this is also one of the important benefit of the animal rearing next is milk marketing so there is a separate market has been created for the milk as we have studied already india uh, in production india is the highest india produces the highest quantity of milk so the milk marketing network it plays a crucial role uh, in rural economies offering steady income source for family farms uh, albeit with modest profit so instead of giving a large incomes apart from i mean that feature is not there however they provide very important income security income security for the rural families right so this is the benefit of the milk market best example you know amul in gujarat so it is the best example of uh, milk network extensive milk ne- milk networks so the farmers who are the backbone of providing milk to this amul uh, amul is in cooperative sector so this i mean there was a successful it is successful in creating extensive milk network networking collecting milk from the uh the deep interiors interior villages of the uh gujarat so in this way it served very well so this is one of the best examples of milk marketing and milk network milk marketing networks next of late there are changes in the animal rearing um, system so first i have said uh, discussed first there was focus on individual farmers individual farmers so the farmers apart from farming they were rearing one or two milch animals milch animals however of late it is shifting to we can say it is uh, shifting to incentive produ- intensive production In- intensive production which means the we can say there is lot of investment is being made and uh, we can say cattle is like 20 uh, to uh, 10 to 20 members are uh, purchased and it is <coughs> i mean we can say simply it is turning into a commercial activity commercial activity akin to the monocropping that we have seen in the when we are studying the agriculture the so after the green revolution and the change in, uh, changes in the farming system so people are focusing on intensive cultivation of single crop monocropping so similar on the similar lines the people are taking this animal rearing as a commercial completely commercial activity commercial activity so they are maintaining an animal farm entirely dedicated there will be a shed and uh, the milch animals will be uh, kept in that particular shed so there will be no grazing outside the fodder will be provided at that place only that particular place only so in this way it is completely being commercialized right so this shift characterized in narrow focus on specific traits of 
animal breeds often achieved through very uh, through heavy reliance on external inputs like feed concentrations and additives such as antibiotics and probiotics however uh, it is a unsustainable way do, of doing animal rearing because it is highly dependent on the external inputs the two synthetic inputs is synthetic inputs so this is an unsustainable way unsustainable according to ecology so the traditional way of animal rearing that is completely integrated with the farming that is more and more sustainable right right next is so this model also the intensive way of uh, rearing animals it also fails to align with the india's diverse agro climatic conditions raising concerns about its suitability and the long term viability right so there is another trend also the trend towards cross breeding it is gaining momentum influenced by factors such as resource availability farmers educational and social status and the climatic considerations so major uh, this is also happening and the government is also actively promoting this cross breeding to increase the production of milk or we can say product uh, productivity of the milk animals right so despite this enthusiasm and promotion by the government the emerging evidence suggests that, suggests diminished diminishing returns and stagnant milk production from cross breeds challenging the prevailing emphasis on exotic breeds exotic breeds mean breeds especially uh, imported from the foreign countries like uh, uk australia new zealand etc so the production is decreasing day by day so it is questioning the traditional wisdom of producing cross breeding and the belief that cross breeding improves the milk productivity so these are the some of the trending changing trends in the milk production in the country or for that matter in the animal rearing now we will see the uh, schemes related to animal husbandry so this is the major part in the country so if a question comes there is a chance of coming from this area only about the schemes uh, from the section of schemes in that first scheme is rashtriya gokul mission uh, right it is launched in 2024 it is implemented by the ministry only ministry of fisheries animal husbandry and dairy government of india so objectives of this scheme are conservation of indigenous cattle breeds so this is the one important major part so it is focusing on conservation of indigenous cattle breeds right so it focuses on preserving and nurturing indigenous breeds like gir sahiwal rathi breeds in the etc uh, these are known for their unique traits such as disease resistance and adaptability to local conditions another important objective is breed improvement and development so right it undertakes selective breeding genetic upgradation and employ modern technologies to enhance productivity and genetic potential of indigenous breeds so this can be made possible through breed improvement and development next another objective is enhancing milk production and productivity so we have seen that productivity has stag- uh, stagnated production and productivity have stagnated so uh, through this uh, mission one of the objectives is promote best management practices scientific breeding and improved animal nutrition to boost milk production there thereby increasing the income of dairy farmers next another objective is establishment of gokul grams so it is to set up breeding centers all bull sanctuaries known as gokul grams housing high quality bulls for indigenous breeds to preserve and enhance genetic diversity so an establishment of gokul grams is another objective next is integrated indigenous cattle centers iicc so establish iicc's for breed improvement and development offering advanced reproductive technologies like artificial insemination and embryo transfer alongside veterinary services 
Next one is another important aspect is strengthening of infrastructure. So enhance cattle breeding infrastructure, including veterinary healthcare facilities, semen, stas- semen stations, bull mother farms, and a bull performance testing units. Next important objective is capacity building and training. So this is also very, very important. So conduct the capacity building and the training programs for farmers, dairy entrepreneurs, and extension workers to improve their knowledge and the skills in scientific cattle management. Right. So other another important activity is uh, act objective is promotion of organic manure, right? Encouraging of use of cow dung and the urine for organic manure production, reducing reliance on the chemical fertilizers and the promoting sustainable agricultural practices. So these are the objectives of the Rashtri Gokul mission. Right. Next important scheme or program is national program for dairy development NPDD. So aim of this uh, program is to enhance milk and milk production, milk product quality while increasing the share of organized milk procurement. So duration of this scheme is 2021-22-25-2025-26. Components if, see, if we see it has two components. First one is component A. Here focus is on establishing or strengthening infrastructure for quality milk testing equipment and primary chilling facilities. The beneficiaries include state cooperative dairy federations, district cooperative milk producers union, unions, SHGs run, uh, SHGs, uh, SHG run private dairies, milk producer companies and farmer producer organizations. So this is first com- component. This component here, it, uh, I mean, focuses on improving the milk product quality quality so this is the focus of the component a so when it comes to component b dairying through cooperatives so if we understand that one so it is supported by the japan international cooperation agency jika implemented uh, on a pilot basis from 2021 to 25 26 the aim is to create essential dry, uh, dairy infrastructure to establish market linkages for village uh, village produce and strengthen capacity building from the village to state levels in stakeholder institutions so this is the component to be second component of the mission so this is about the national program for dairy development next is animal husbandry statistics division so if we understand about this one so it operates under under the department of animal husbandry and dairying and it is responsible for generating animal husbandry statistics right so it executes the centrally sponsored scheme livestock census and integrated sample survey comprising two components those two components are livestock census integrated sample survey so livestock census are conducted once in five years Right. They are known as quinquennial uh, animal or livestock census. Right. It is implemented by the Department of Animal Husbandry and Dairying in collaboration with the State Animal, De- animal Husbandry Departments. Next, another important program is National Animal Disease Control Program. So it is a flagship uh, scheme launched by the Honorable Prime Minister in 2019. It aims to control foot and mouth disease and brucellosis uh, so these are the when we discuss about the cattle these are the two important diseases that are uh, that the cattle is affected by first is foot and the foot and mouth uh, disease next is brucellosis so the scheme is focusing on addressing these two diseases in the cattle or animal right so these will be fought these diseases will be fought by vaccinating 100% cattle, buffalo, sheep, goat, etc. Right. For vaccination for foot and mouth disease and 100% bovine, female calves aged between 4 to 8 months for brucellosis. So for brucellosis, the female calves that are aged between 4 to 8 months, they will be 100% vac- vaccinated for brucellosis. 
whereas it, when it comes to foot and the foot and mouth disease all the animals across the sections they will be vaccinated 100% right so the total of uh, outlay if you see it is approximately 13000 crores next important aspect is another initiative is dairy processing and infrastructure development scheme so dairy processing and infrastructure development fund is created uh, with the corpus of approximately 8000 crores in collaboration with the nabard so this is a fund basically right so the objectives of this fund will include uh, modernizing milk processing plants and machinery creating additional infrastructure for processing of milk and providing loan assistance to various entities such as state dairy federations district milk unions and the milk producer companies right so there are some new components have been added to this uh, dairy processing and infrastructure development fund those new categories are cattle feed or feed supplement plants milk transportation systems so loans can be provided for all these things also so those uh, we can say sections or categories are cattle feed or feed supplement plants milk transportation systems uh, those include refrigerated vans insulated tankers etc so milk transportation mostly it is happening uh, through the public transport only so one of the characteristic feature of uh, milk uh, we can say milk chains in india is there is no dedicated transportation system for milk so the smaller individual farmers or the uh, small scale collectors milk collectors they are dependent on the public transport only so they transport the milk to the nearest town in the local rtc buses so this is we can say it is a an inefficient way of transporting milk so this particular fund focuses on uh creating milk transport dedication milk transportation systems next uh, next to create marketing infrastructure next uh, commun- commodity and uh, cattle feed go downs so in this way many other categories have been added under which loan can be granted from this fund right. another important is ki uh, fund or scheme animal husbandry infrastructure development fund so this infrastructure development fund it has been created for many sectors like fisheries sector right uh, for animal uh, animal husbandry also for many other sect- sectors the infrastructure development uh, fund has been created for horti- horticulture also it has been created so try to remember this infrastructure development for all the sectors including the animal husbandry if you see the objectives increase milk and meat processing capacity and diversification of products provide greater access to unorganized milk <coughs> rural milk and meat producers to organized markets realize increased prices for producers <coughs> offer quality milk and meat products to consumers and address malnutrition next another thing is foster entrepreneurship generate employment promote exports and ensure availability of quality animal feed at affordable prices right right this is uh, some information about the animal husbandry sector right you also from your uh, side try to collect some more information about the sector so you have to be thorough with the statistics about the sector right so in this way you will be ready to address any question that will be coming in the examination right so now we will see the question previously asked the question from this topic it is asked in 2012 the question is which of the following is the chief characteristic of mixed farming so mixed farming we have studied so the options given are cultivation of both cash crops and food crops this is not the correct explanation uh, next option b cultivation of two or more crops in the same field it is not the mixed farming it is intercropping enter cropping next question uh, rearing of animals and cultivation of crops together yes this is the correct explanation of mixed farming so the correct option is option c uh, rearing of animals along with the cultivation of crops right so this is it for today thank you thank you for joining the class see you next time until then have a good day